Welcome back to The Shed. Tonight, I'm going to take a break from our Hugo and Nebula award-winning novels that I've been ranking on the sci-fi shed ladder here. Um, but I'm not going to stray too far from home. I want to take a look at The Ring of Returnal by Charles L. Harness. Now, I came across this book in a book haul video that I did several months back now on this channel. And this novel sort of jumped out at me because I wasn't familiar with Charles Harness. So I did a bit of research and I was surprised to find that he actually was nominated several times for his novella works in both the Hugo and the Nebula Awards. So I thought, why not take a read? Uh, sort of the theme of this uh, channel at the moment seems to be Hugo and Nebula Awards. So I thought I'd take a look at The Ring of Returnal. So what I'd like to do is go through and give you a plot overview, tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and make some recommendations. So the novel begins with Captain Andrek approaching the node, which is sort of the, the center of the universe. And the reason he's there is because he's got Oberon, who's the magister of the 12 galaxies, on board. And this guy is basically on his last hunting trip, right? So he wants to go out and capture or kill one of these creatures that lives close to the node because he needs to go and take the throne and he's sort of thinking this is my last irresponsible act and uh, once this is done I need to go and knuckle down and rule this galaxy so I've got to get this out of my system but Captain Andrek sort of doesn't want any part of this and says hey you know you really should be taking a step back <laughs> this is pretty dangerous stuff you're playing with and I'm not quite comfortable with all of this but Oberon won't have any bar of that and he gets Hunter his bodyguard to kill the captain but what we find is that that wave, there's, a, there's this energy wave coming towards the node and one of the reasons why Captain Andrick wanted to get the hell out of there is approaching this node and Oberon is caught up in this wave and he suffers from some pretty drastic and severe injuries. And what, what we learn is that these injuries, there's a master surgeon who can stitch him back together but he's sort of thinking that, hey, he doesn't really have the will to live though. I can physically stitch him back together, but unless he finds the strength to carry on, it's just not going to make it. Um, and what he learns is that Captain Andrek had two sons. One of them is, got, is this guy called Amir, who was an artist and a musician, famous uh, poet. And what we learn is that, uh, that this Oberon fellow really liked Amir's plays and his music and his poetry. And so the master surgeon has this great idea of saying, well, Amir, you're going to have to go and make poetry for this guy because this is the only way he's going to survive. But Amir is also very sick and he's, he's about to die himself. He's got some lung issues and he's got all sorts of health problems. And so the master surgeon had been building this sort of computer system. But because of the accident to Oberon, things have escalated and they now they find themselves that we're not going to be able to build this computer system to do to do all these ballads and poetry for Amir. Um, so what we're going to do is transplant Amir's brain into the computer so that Oberon can listen to the computer and hopefully find the will to survive. And that's what we find happens. So the master surgeon does some pretty amazing science, <laughs> gets this guy's brain, or at least the function of his brain that he can use for this computer system, transplants it into the computer system somehow, and now we have Rimor, which is a great play on the word rhyme, or rhyme, rhymer, rhymer, rhymer. So he places it into this computer called Rimor, um, and we find that Amir is now basically Rimor, this computer system, and um, Oberon has found the will to survive. And what we also learn is that Captain Andrak had another son, little James or Jimmy, as uh, uh, Amir used to call him. He was two or three years old at the time. And Oberon recovers from his injuries and Amir is nowhere to be found. And then the novel goes forward a couple of years and we find that James is now working for the house Oberon, or Jimmy is working for the house uh, Oberon as a lawyer and he's still got this weight on his shoulders because he's still trying to find his brother Amir because he's done a whole lot of investigation and all he can ever find out is that he was seen with the master surgeon at the house of Oberon and that was the last anyone ever saw of him. 
During his time in the Oberon household, we learn of two different and very unique religions um, in this world building that we got going on here by Charles Harness. So one of them is the alien religion, A-L-E-A-N, the alien religion that sort of believes that every, or the, the premise, the premise of the religion is that everything is based on chaos or random chance, right? So there's nothing, there's no predestination. Everything is basically um, a, a dice roll. The other opposing religion is the religion of Returnal, and they have a different philosophical worldview. Their premise is that everything is pretty predetermined, predestined, and it sort of follows a cyclical ring or this ring of return, or right? hence the namesake of this novel. Um, so we have this alien chaos versus return or predestination sort of religions, and the two sort of go head in head against each other through the novel. Um, so we sort of brought into contact with the religious beliefs of these two, of these, these people in these worlds, right? Which I found rather interesting in the novel as well. And whilst all that's going, uh, James is still trying to find his brother, but he's also the lawyer. And what we learn is that terror, which is a sort of play on the word terror for our planet Earth, um, terror has made some pretty bad decisions, as we tend to do. And they've started a nuclear war in their past, and they're going to be sentenced to annihilation. And that annihilation is basically taking the whole world, the whole planet gets shifted to this node and it's basically going to be destroyed and thrown into this world, right, into the void. So what we find is that James, being a lawyer, he needs to make an account and he needs to voice as to whether or not, you know, terror deserves to be annihilated. And it, it seems to be pretty unanimous. It's almost a full, foregone conclusion. Terror has no hope. It's going to get um, annihilated. But he comes across in his travels, he comes across this pilgrim. And this pilgrim is of the religious fraternal. And he sort of makes a friendship with um, James. And he gives him hints along the ways. And in the end, the two work together and get some answers. What happened to, uh, you know, to James' dad? What happens to his brother? What and what is the ultimate fate of terror? So look, I found it a rather interesting novel, right? It's, um, I, I was surprised, honestly. I, I didn't know what to expect by Charles Earl Harness, but I found myself thoroughly enjoying this one. It was uh, an interesting read, and I think he came up with some really interesting concept. So I really like the play on the religions, like where we have this chaos versus predestination in Alia and Returnal. I, I found the balance of that being pretty good, uh, which played brilliantly into the chapters and the, it, really the theme of Alia and Returnal is throughout this book. And if I haven't done all already, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my thumbnail would be something like, you know, predestination versus chaos, right? Because I think that's the main theme of this novel. And I think it's really nicely done. Um, and it's sort of, and that theme is throughout the whole novel, right? The chapters themselves in the book go from chapter 1 through chapter 12, and then from chapter 12 all the way back to chapter 1, uh, following that dodecahedron, I can never say that word, dodecahedron, the 12-faceted, you know, die of um, Alia, right? So it sort of follows that, but it circles back on itself as well to reflect on that ring of eternal where everything is, is eternal and forever you know, nothing's new under the sun, basically, right? Everything is a ring and what has happened in the past will happen again in the future. So even the chapters um, and even the chapter headings, you find that they're just a play, they're, they're slightly reworded. They're the same chapters, but slightly reworded again to emphasize that ring of returnal. So I thought that theme was well balanced and was brought throughout the whole narrative. Uh, we have several different die casts several times seeing that ring of return or manifest itself in the book. Uh, so I did find that aspect of the novel very enjoyable. In, in some areas, it took on a really hard science fiction element as well. So he goes into some pretty good detail around how galaxies are, are, are formed and other scientific elements in the novel, which I thought were not too heavy, but just a, a nice balance again. I, I did enjoy the hard science. Um, and the other thing, I mean, who doesn't like killer spiders? <laughs> so, there was an element in here where there's this killer spider uh, that has a pretty uh, interesting uh, life cycle as well. And uh, again, even the spider's web plays into that whole 
dodecahedron, 12 faceted triangle thing. It's like throughout the whole book, right? If you really look for it, you'll find it several different uh, references within the novel. Um, and yeah, a couple of little pearls I thought in there, a couple of little really nice ideas that I thought could have manifested themselves a little better, which is, I think, a good tangent to, into some of the things that I didn't quite enjoy in the novel. Now, I thought he had some really good concepts come to play. Like, I really liked the idea of how Amir's brain was taken into this computer, but then it's, we sort of lose track of it. It sort of goes away and we don't see it again until the latest chapters in a novel. And I really would have liked to have seen Charles really expand on those themes. He did that a couple of times in the novel where I thought that's a really interesting concept. And he just felt a little bit rushed at times. So I thought it's one of those few books, like I said, that I thought would have benefited just by a little bit extra padding, right? Just a bit more explanation, getting a little bit deeper into some of these thoughts. He did it a couple of times in the novel that I thought, you know what, this is a really good book. But if he had done just a little bit more, brought us on the journey a little bit more, I thought it could have been a little bit better as well. So look, in the end, I really enjoyed Charles O'Harness's The Ring of Eternal. A bit of a surprise. You know, it's like one of those really good B-movies. You know, when you sit down sometimes and you put on a television show or one of your streaming favorite streaming media sites and you don't know anything about this particular movie and you press play and you walk away thinking, well, that wasn't the best movie I've ever seen, but they a really solid, big, great movie, right? That's exactly how I felt reading The Ring of Returnal. I thought, you know what, this is a really decent novel. I don't mind it at all. I think it could have been expanded, like I said, in some areas that would have made it a solid four out of five for me. But as it stands, still a very good novel. I still highly recommend it. I haven't seen it come up online very often. So if you have an opportunity to pick up some of Charles L. Harness's work, in particular The Ring of Returnal, I wouldn't hesitate picking this one up and buying it. Um, like I said, don't expect an A-grade movie or a 5 out of 5 novel here, but I'll still give it a good solid 3.5 to 4 out of 5. I thought it was pretty decent novel uh, by Charles L. Harness. So who would I recommend this novel to then? Look, I think there are some elements in this that will appeal to new science fiction readers. I think it's actually not a bad introduction to science fiction. The... Uh, it's a good, fun, enjoyable read. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. But again, there are so many good books out there, right? So if it was your first science fiction novel, I'd say if you're a fan of those B-grade movies, right, like those, those movies that just have that little bit of something mixing or missing, but those unpolished diamonds, right? If you're a fan of those kind of movies, I think you're going to really enjoy Charles Orlanis's The Ring of Returnal. Um, I would also recommend it to you know any science fiction, vintage science fiction reader. It's right. It's a 1968 novel, right? But I thought the technology that he he plays in the book here is it, pretty decent technology, and I think overall it's the science is not too bad either. Uh, so I think if you like hard science fiction, you won't be too disappointed in Charles Orlanis. Um, but, you know, I was looking at my stack behind me. I was thinking, who would I liken Charles Earl Harness to? And I really couldn't find one particular author there that I thought, you know, did, you know if you like, for example, like I've done in the past, oh, if you like Harry Harrison, sure. If you like Larry Niven or Frank Herbert, you know, or if you like Robert Heinlein, Arthur C. Clarke, so many authors that you can talk to. But there's not any one particular author I could say this reminded me of. But I will say it has elements of what is nice about Larry Niven with some of that hard science. I think there's elements of that. I think there's elements of Frank Herbert in there when it comes to the religious aspects of it, like you see with the, the deity, uh, what is it, the deity experiment, what's it called? The deity experiment, I think it is. Um, the Jesus incident, like say so Frank Herbert had that flavor where he played with religions, um, yeah, so those elements is, is a bit of a mix and match of several different authors. But this is the only novel I've read of Charles Harness, so I'm looking forward to reading more. Um, it'll be interesting. Why not come along on the journey with me? If you read some Charles Earl Harness, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What other novels of his would you recommend? Uh, was this his best works? Uh, are, are there others there that would, you would highly recommend as well? Love to hear your thoughts. But hey... This has been Peter, solid B-grade novel in this Charles Orlanis' The Ring of Returnal. 
the cover art has nothing to do with the novel, but it is a pretty cool cover art, nevertheless. Anyway, always a pleasure having you along for the ride. Thank you for joining me in the shed, and I'll see you next time in the shed.